Hey everybody, welcome back to Fishing Louisiana. Just want to give a quick update on um, the rod build. We're going to start um, some rod build uh, videos coming up on how to go along the process. And uh, I actually have one uh, in the dryer right now. Um, had a little mishap with it, so doing some repairs to it. And I'm going to uh, show you that right now. I just wanted to give you a quick update. And uh, we'll be adding um, some footage on um, how to start the process of building a rod. Um, let's turn around here and you can see what's going on with this rod. This one is in the dryer right now. I don't know if you can see it. It's going to come around. See, it says fish in Louisiana. The, um, I wasn't happy with the epoxy. When I put the epoxy over the sticker here, it, um, it got real lumpy. And then over here, it had another sticker that said, uh, you know, medium pole, six foot six, and had all the specs, what size lure and line to put on it. And it was really, really bumpy, like over on the other part. So I was using the torch and trying to heat the epoxy up to get it to um, flow around better and be more evenly. Well, and in that process, I ended up scorching um, the epoxy and it turned yellow. So I had to let it dry for, I don't know, it was 24 hours and then um, tried to remove the sticker. And in the process of removing the sticker, I put a scratch here on the blank. So I wrapped it with uh, the matching threads with uh, the same color as the rod and uh, these other uh, threads. As you can tell, this is um, a gray blank with uh, blue guides. They come out um, pretty darn good got a ton of guides on it and uh it's a it's a casting um setup and uh it's perfectly balanced perfectly on spine so uh we just wanted to, i just wanted to give a quick update on this and uh i'm going to start another rod here in uh, a little while and start putting the handle together and show that process i really like these decals i had made for the end here Fishing Louisiana YouTube channel. Let's see if we can't get this thing to stop. It's a little wavy. I'm not happy with that. I will not put epoxy on the decals again. I'll uh, just decal the rod and be done with it. But I'm happy with how it come out. I don't know why the blue here is popping. It's the exact same thread there, but with the blue, I did a blue and gray wrap. And when you put your finger here, you can balance that rod perfectly across your finger. It will balance perfectly. So uh, stay tuned and uh, coming up, I'm gonna show you how to put a handle on the rod and start the rod process. Don't mind my table, it's a disaster. It was clean yesterday, but I'm a slob when I'm working. All right, I'll be back. Thanks for watching. Okay, everybody, we're back, and we're going to um, show you the process of setting up another pole to get ready to wrap. Uh, first thing we start with is the handle. As you can see, I got the tent over the other one that's still drying. Um, gets cold in the garage, so we have a heater in there with a th uh, thermostat or thermometer so we can keep track of the temperature. Um, Plus it acts as a dust cover because uh, when you're reaming these out, you do make a lot of dust and you definitely don't want dust in your epoxy. And this one we're going to start with, uh, we got this nice blue blank here. So we're going to put a handle on it. I'm going to make a casting. Pull on. This is a six foot, um, six foot six medium all with uh, fast action. Get this set up here. Put a couple stands up for it. Got 
got a bunch of different um, types of handles and butt and fighting ends and stuff like that. So we're going to um, get it set up out and we'll show you the process of doing all this. As you can tell, the hole in this is small. They make them small on purpose. Let's set this up here so you can see. The hole in the um, ends are small so that they can fit any rod. You have to size it to the rod you want. This is going to go on. This is going to go on here. So it has to be ringed out to the size. You definitely want to make sure you do not go over the size because any slop and it will make a mess. So let's get started on bringing this out. I'm just looking for one that's about the same size. I think I'm going to go with the smaller size first and uh, try to get this set up. I'll probably time lapse this because it's going to be a boring process because you want to keep trying to fit it, do it again, fit it, do it again. You do not want to do it too fast because you will make it too big and then it's a process to fix it. It can be done but you want to do it right the first time. gonna go up one more size here but it's real close so we don't want to go too much as you can see the hole is getting bigger Just a little too tight still. We want it snug, but we don't want to have to force it on there because you'll force the epoxy out of it. And you want as much epoxy in there as you can. tight fit. It might loosen it up just a hair more. It's a little too tight the way for what I like to see. Put it on all the way, and then I'll get my uh, China pencil out and give myself a mark so I know how far to put that epoxy on there. And that mark ends up about an eighth of an inch past where you're going, so 
you want to um, stay on the inside of that. This one comes without the paint on the end, which is really good because I would normally uh, sand it. I'm still going to sand up some of it because I want that epoxy to stick the best that I possibly can. I just get a little piece of sandpaper out and I'll uh, scuff up this paint so the epoxy can stick to it. off of there and now that'll stick to it and then um, you're gonna wanna um, I let the um, end the, the fighting butt dry before I uh, bend the rod and find the spine of the rod for the real seat and all that but I'll get this on there and then I'll measure do my measurements and uh, I'll uh, go from there I do want to switch from this white china pencil to a black one because I didn't like the way that, I didn't like the way that white one showed up on there. So that's what we'll do. We'll mix up a little batch of, uh, we're going to just make a little batch of um, this epoxy. Well, it's a paste, so, and it's two part, and this stuff is pretty forgiving, it's uh, um, the liquid epoxy that's uh, not very forgiving, so we're just going to take a roughly the same amount, you don't have to be perfect with this part, but let me tell you, I learned the hard way. You do have to be perfect when you're using a liquid um, epoxy for clear coating the threads. You do not want to um, go with one part more than the other. If you harden it too fast, it'll crack. If you don't put enough harder in, then it stays tacky. You give that a good mix. And then you um, get it on the rod. Put a generous amount on there. You want it all, all over there. I like to put it on the end two and uh, like in the end so it like squishes into this uh, butt fighting butt. Always put your caps back on because you will hit something with your elbow. These paste don't really make a difference. It won't spill but everything else will spill on you. Let me get the uh, alcohol out. little pick with a 90 degree to get the cap off of that alcohol. Get another rag out. And uh, we'll get this on. I spin the rod as I'm uh, putting it on there because I do want to get as much on there as possible inside and all the way around it as possible. Take the excess off as I go.
now I'm trying to get the uh, excess off of there without getting it all up on the fighting, but this denatured alcohol it's clean burning it uh, fuel for the um, candle that I have um, you don't um, it's fast drying and it cleans really good that's why I use that same thing while this is drying I'll, I'll uh, keep going and uh, getting these to go on where I, where I want them but uh, I like to put the you glue something down and forget to put on your um, your covers here so I'm going to do that now and get them down there in place. That way there, I won't forget about them. One goes, and you, as you can see, there are angles. So one's going to go this way and then one's going to go this way. So when I put them on there, I got to make sure to do that. And then we'll just get them down where they go and we'll get them out of the way. this one down but past this six inch mark we got here so we could uh, 
just roll it up when we're done. six-inch mark off. Better put another one out of here. from there. 